With paintwork and exhausts both loud enough to grab the attention of the entire city of London the moment they leave an underground garage, Lamborghinis have gained a bit of a reputation as automotive peacocks. They're seen strutting in cities, grandstanding with dramatic flourishes, but never roaming far or fast. And that's a shame. It's not that I want to diminish those theatrics. It's just that all that drama needs a stage like this. You want to hear its voice rise and fall on the load, not just cry fleetingly in a confined space. Out here, that engine can really tell a tale. An early upshift. Two downshifts. Sustained acceleration, braking, heart throttle, wavering, wavering. Then you go for it. It tells a story as it goes through the landscape. This is where it belongs. This is the Huracan Evo rear-wheel drive, and it is the baby of the Lamborghini range. Before we get to the mechanicals, let's take a moment for the looks, because I think this is the best-looking car to come out of Santa Gata for quite a while. The front grille is the only real point of difference with a rear-wheel drive, but those inward-leaning vanes lend a cleaner, less fussy appearance, while the car's overall shape remains as sharp as a shiv. It's more early LP400 than late 25th anniversary to make a Countach comparison. Anyway, as the name suggests, there is no drive going to the front wheels, which are instead left solely to deal with steering duties. Without the added traction, the 0-62 mile an hour time has risen from 2.9 to 3.3 seconds, but the top speed remains a flicker of the needle over 200 miles an hour. For this entry-level Lamborghini, the outputs of the 5.2 litre V10 have also been reined in a touch by 29 brake horsepower and 29 pounds foot to 602 brake horsepower and 413 pounds foot overall. Do you know what? I don't really care about the numbers with this engine. I know that this is the base car and as such has less power and torque than the four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive Huracan Evo. But to be honest, if you need more than what this has got, <laughs> I think you're kidding yourself. The numbers, the 0 to 60 times, the top speed, it doesn't matter. It's all about the way that this car gets down the road, the way it responds, the way that it sounds, the intangibles, the bits that can't be put on a spec sheet. I love the way this engine changes in character. You can almost make it sound like a, a big single cylinder motorbike at, at low revs when you're pottering around. And then hearing it under load, that low growl, and then it builds, and then it gets to a proper yowl and a howl. <laughs> what a voice. What a car. We've obviously got the different modes here, so if I knock it back to the Strada for a second, and pop it even into auto, the whole car becomes surprisingly serene. And in fact, it is pretty usable. The ride in Strada is, well, pretty plush to be honest. And the engine is fairly muted. These seats, I've been very critical of Lamborghini seats recently, but these ones are actually very good. They've been very comfortable on a long journey. This new touchscreen down here looks very nice. For me, it's a bit out of the way really. I don't want to have to look all the way down there, take my eyes off the road. But it looks nice and it's fairly easy to navigate and it's obviously got Apple CarPlay as well. One thing I do find a bit frustrating is that the volume, there should just be a, a volume switch somewhere. Ergonomics I do like though. Things, the buttons down here, this reverse lever, it looks as though it's just pure sort of art, decorative almost, but it means it's very easy to find, certainly we're doing three-point turns. Things that aren't so convenient, well, the boot space in the front is more meal deal than full weekly shop, and the tyre noise from the wide Pirellis means making a phone call can be a bit of a Don Jolly affair. But it is surprisingly usable, and 
whilst it's not as usable as an R8, the usability in this is more like a bonus. It's a bit like, um, well, having your favourite Vindaloo and discovering that it's actually nutritionally good for you as well. You didn't order it for that, you ordered it for the spices that take the roof of your mouth off. But, you know, it's nice that it's doing you some good as well. But whilst you get some of the Lamborghini character in Strada, it's really when you go to Sport or even Corsa that this car really comes alive. The change in character is extraordinary, but the damping of these adaptive dampers is superb. I remember in the old rear-wheel drive, it could just feel a bit choppy. It was quite hard to get into a flow, certainly down a bumpy road. But this is much better. Rear-wheel drive is 33 kilos lighter, and it's already taken out from over the nose, so it's shifted weight balance to the rear. And it does feel quite light in the nose. Certainly, you actually feel like it's almost sort of the nose is grip that you're really concentrating on through the corners. You don't tend to worry about the traction at the rear so much most of the time because, well, it's just enormous grip at the rear. I've driven this in some fairly torrential rain and I can't say I missed the all-wheel drive to be honest. The only problem is that if you want to be in Sport or Corsa, then it slackens off the ESC and there's no ego mode so you can't fine tune the dampers and engine and ESC you just have to take whatever you get in each of the three modes which just at times can be a bit frustrating it would be nice to be able to pick and choose certain elements occasionally it's so good down this bumpy road We've got the carbon ceramics on this and they are stupendous again, something that Lamborghini has improved over the years. I remember early Gallardos being pretty terrible with their carbon ceramics, but these are fantastic. And it's not playful like say an F8, when it does let go, it does so pretty quickly, but it also rains itself back in quickly as well. The naturally aspirated engine means you don't have quite the same torque to unhook the rear tyres as you do with a turbocharged unit, but when you do brake traction, you have greater response and precision in the way you can either maintain or rein in any slides. The steering is an improvement on past Hurricanes, especially with the added weight of Sport or Corsa mode, but it still isn't quite up there in terms of feel with the best from McLaren or Porsche. The ride, however, has matured to the point where I think it is on a par with the competition, with much more polish and poise. I'm amazed by how well it's dealt with these bumpy roads. One of the things you really notice that changes as you go through the modes, the engine obviously steps up massively as you go from starter to sport. The gear shift is still really smooth in the sport. There's no discernible sort of kick when you change gear at all. You have to go all the way to Corsa to really get a, just a bit more of perhaps a sense of it changing gear, which I like. This might be the baby of really the entire Lamborghini range, but I'm not sure you need any more than this. It's got everything. Yes, this car has a lot of options on it, 53,000 pounds of options to be precise, but most of them are cosmetic. That glittering paint colour, by the way, is blue seamy and costs 9,500 pounds through the Ad Personam scheme. The biggest mechanical change to this car is the addition of carbon ceramic brakes. However, I've driven one with standard steel brakes and they are just fine. So what I'm saying is I think you really could buy one of these at close to the listed £164,000 or £34,000 less than the all-wheel drive version and still get a fabulous car. For all the Lamborghinis, it appear to be all about the bling and the excess. This is actually 
a very pure supercar and it's all the better for being so. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you enjoyed that review of one of the newest Lamborghinis. If you'd like to see our review of an older Lamborghini, namely the Diablo SV, then just click on the link. And please do feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Thank you.